Alright guys, we back. Okay. So, we are... Going to clear out what we put for the foundation of this. So that we can save some of the diorite. And then we're going to have to go back into the... We'll look for some more, but we'll probably go mine some... Uh, Harvest some acacia first. For the floors. And do the windows as well. Because if we can save a lot of space on the windows, that will help. I don't know how much of this we're going to do as a window, though. These will eventually be like in like I know this inside wall this wall here will eventually be an inside wall. Um If you blow up a car with a body dumped aside, it magically ends up being carried by you. What ha if I blow up two cars with bodies dumped in them? We're trying. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. At least we know we've got a ton of cobblestone back in our house. See how our glass is looking as well. We're going to make um, window panes as well, because that'll make the glass last longer, and that way we don't have to worry about constantly having to farm. wall like the ceiling of something as something else as well like the inside ceiling we'll have to find at least a little bit more but did help. Okay. Um, let's go farm some acacia wood, actually. This wood, I think, will look and contrast really nicely with the, the white stone. At least until we can find, um, uh, like, dark oak. Which is, I swear. 
swear I just heard like a villager or something. We definitely want to make sure we get at least some of these trees. And actually, you know what? I'm going to replant these ones almost right away. Oh god. No creeper. Bye-bye. Oh no, it came out anyways! Help! Is it going towards my base? No, that's a cactus. Let's go see how this looks, um, like as the floor. to be hollow. I know it's like not necessarily something that matters, but Hey Rickard, how you doing? eventually make the roof even taller but for now we just need something to replace our little wooden shack because it could be kind of cool to eventually have like a really nice tall roof like ceiling with um oh we're gonna need a lot more acacia <laughs> but i do like this as the floor Dune record. There we go. Lots of window panes now. 
Uh, not too bad. We finished Cyberpunk yesterday, so... Uh, we'll be doing New Game Plus of Assassin's Creed Origins next for our Assassin's Creed playthrough. But for now, um, I'm just going to take a day or two to... I'm just going to play some other random stuff. And then probably once we start Assassin's Creed again, we'll probably do, like... We'll do at least some days where we'll do a different game in the morning and the afternoon. So we're doing Minecraft this morning. We'll be doing Phasmophobia tonight. Might do more Minecraft tomorrow. Eventually, I'll probably also take, um, like, just full-on do half days or take a day off uh, on weekends. Um, but right now, I can't go out, so there's no point in that at the moment, really. Like, I could use the time to clean, but I technically can't even, like, take my garbage out, so... Rate it zero to six. That's an odd rating system, but I like it because six is my favorite number. So we're, we'll go with that. Um, most people are like z zero to five or zero to ten. But I like zero to six. That's going to be our new rating system for this channel because six is my favorite number. Um, for Cyberpunk, uh, on a scale of zero to six... Okay, we're going to have to, overall, I would probably say a five. I would probably say, like, a five overall. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Overall, I would probably say a five. Play style, if you discount bugs, which will hopefully get fixed in the next few months... I would probably rate it a 6 for play style alone. But yeah, uh, as for like general writing, like overall writing, I would probably say a 4. Um, overall writing, I would probably say like a 4 or a 5. I'll say four and a half for overall writing. Uh, I'd probably say four and a half overall for writing, but main story writing is only going to get, like, probably, like, a three and a half for me. Like, the ending... The ending was terrible. The ending was terrible. It's weird because some parts they clearly put a lot of time and effort into making it have depth and meaning to what you were saying they were doing, but other parts like half finished thoughts they said <laughs> F it and left it in. Yeah. The combat is like a six for me. Like combat and general play is definitely a six for me. I freaking love the combat. Combat was amazing. The only part where it lost points on me, honestly, was the writing and, uh, like, the ending. Some of the writing was just terrible, and the ending was just... Like, the ending of The Witcher was phenomenal, so you know that they can do endings, but the ending of... Cyberpunk just felt like, well, we need the game to end somehow, so let's just do this. And that's pretty much it. It truly was, in my mind, a terrible ending. And I hate to say that, because I did really enjoy the game, but I just can't. That ending was... 
It's like supposed to be all about like you have all of these choices and stuff. But you don't have any choices in the ending. You're forced to like have your character essentially ride off into the sunset with somebody you may not have necessarily really cared for much to begin with. How free did you feel in the city? Like, if you wanted to take a break, could you walk around basking in the graphics, take a ride around the city, eat a bowl of ramen, etc.? Yes! Yeah, no, the open, the open world aspect was definitely, like, where the game kind of excelled. There were a lot of places you could go. There was a lot of, like, little side quests and activities and stuff. Um, there was a lot to do in that aspect of it. See, that's what I would like, is the... I also want to get dark oak planks. And not to mention, you could go out of the city, and even though it's basically a giant landfill, it's still really great looking. Yeah, like, there was even stuff, like, out in the Badlands and stuff. And I was playing on medium with a few things cranked up. Like, I te cranked up my textures because my my graphics card actually has half-decent VRAM. Um, but even playing on medium with cranked up textures, like... The game looked beautiful when it wasn't bugging out. So. I thought that there was some more acacia leaves decomposing somewhere, but I don't know where they went. Okay, here's some other smallish ones. I just want to get the smallish ones so we can do the whole tree. So that the leaves will decompose and then we can, um, hopefully get some little baby trees so we can replant. But yeah, the open world aspect was pretty cool. I also found what happened to Takamura being a little bit eh. I mean, being able to take a break, eat a bowl of ramen, drink a beer at a pub, go for a jog, go eye shopping. Gives a great feel to the game. I mean... I was under the assumption he was dead, but I don't know if they ever really specified. Like, I don't think they said at the end of the game, there was just, like, the raid. And my assumption was that he was killed in the raid, but I don't know if he actually was. I thought there was a baby tree. Okay, there we go. You were supposed to ignore Johnny and save him? Ah. Well, I mean, I guess supposed to if you wanted to save him. I'm curious, though, as to... Like, if there's something that Cyberpunk considers a canon playthrough, and what that would be. And if some of the writing and story makes more sense if you go that route. Why is this grass growing on water? And flying.
played Far Cry Dragon, Blood Dragon. Uh, I do have uh, Far Cry Primal, though, and I want to play through that at some point. How much wood do I have now? Oh, that'll be enough. Okay. It'd be kind of cool to get some dark oak and use that as a ceiling. Still need to go through Blood Dragon. I have so many games I need to play. Blood Dragon is awesome. You can travel mostly anywhere, but most of it is uh, base rating in a linear story, like the hunting aspect. But adding a city would be amazing. See, um, I really liked Origins for that. Like, Origins was such a huge world. So if you wanted to just, like, ride around and hunt, you could. need to get Valhalla though for our playthrough. As sad as it sounds, I might be able to afford it now that I'm laid off because employment insurance is um, pretty much the same as what I would make if I worked consistently like 44 hours a week, but I wasn't working consistently 44 hours a week. Which is kind of sad because they've increased minimum wage to essentially what they consider a, um, a living income. Which means that I am barely and sometimes under what the government considers a, like, living wage. That's sad. That's sad. Yes, this is the Java version. Uh, if I, I have the console version as well on the PlayStation 4. But I like this version. Okay. So now we have, we're going to clear out some space for some windows. Where, what should our windows be? Like this? Let me make my window like this. Uh, I'm just playing on my own right now. Um... I'm going to have Mux look into whether there's a way that we can let people play with us without, like, giving away stuff. Shit. Because I know that one concern with playing... Like, if you don't pay for a server is that the only way to play with people is to give away your IP address, which is not something I'm going to be doing. Should we do an Acacia door? Should we? I can't remember what all the different doors look like. Let's go take a look. And this got us a little bit more of this. I don't know if I want to put window on this side too, though. Like I 
I said, eventually I'm going to expand, but it's not exactly like I'm going to be short on glass. Especially once we start leveling this off. Maybe I will make windows on the sides for now. It will help me with uh, saving space. If we could do like actually wait I think I did one more than I wanted to So go look at what all the different window types are. Or door types, rather. Oh no, I need more glass. Where am I ever gonna get more glass in this desert? here is quite a bit more but uh i live in a cheap really questionable apartment and my rent is like 860 a month i also have to like it's not utilities included so i also have to pay my electricity on top of that i have currently car payments so luckily that's actually paid off this year so by fall i will have extra money every month then there is internet uh food phone bill gas etc 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 okay where's the door types Okay, so that's an acacia door, that's a wood door. That's oak. Do we want to do oak? <sighs> Hang on, let me see what other cards I have. I know there's birch in here too somewhere.
That's birch. That's acacia. Dark oak. What do you think would look best with my house? Maybe the dark oak? It would definitely contrast really well. Oh no, like I have, um, for my, I've done budgeting and I'm actually starting to budget really hard using a spreadsheet. Um, I only have anywhere from 50 to $80 a month for any spending that needs to be done. So that's groceries, um, you know, cat supplies, cleaning supplies. If I need anything like, um, uh, clothing or shoes or anything like that. Okay, I'm going to make one of these. And I'm going to make one of these as well. So we can see which one we like better. Okay. No, I am broke. Uh, I'm trying to get my debts down as well. From when I didn't make enough money. Or from like emergency things like um, getting my wisdom teeth done and stuff. Okay, let's check these out. What do you guys think? I kind of like that. Looks very castle-y. Oh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like, uh, you know, like, I usually only buy it like once or twice a year, but you know, stuff like, um, uh, like dishwashing soap, um, Dishwasher, dishwashing soap. Yeah, I kind of like that for the door. For the front door. We can use maybe the acacia doors inside. Uh, dishwashing soap. Um, uh, some kind of other cleaner like uh, Pine Sol or Mr. Clean or something for general cleaning. I mean, toilet paper is expensive. Like, there's a lot of things that a lot of people take advantage of that they don't realize, like, all fits for me in that $50 to $80 a month. You were just making concentration? Oh, yeah, no, no, I'm not trying to... I'm not saying you're not. It's like, I think that you, you kind of get the situation that I'm in though. <laughs> like people don't realize that. All right, guys, we are slowly getting there. Um, we're going to need a little bit of more diorite though. And then uh, we're going to have to, I have to figure out what kind of ceiling I want. I could have done a granite ceiling, except I ended up, um, I might even make this one more taller so that we can have the full rim around the, the windows. Be kind of cool. But I accidentally converted all of my granite into stairs. I need to make like, I need to make a button or something that'll open both of those doors. How do I do that? I am a Minecraft noob, more or less. Okay, so we're gonna have to go back into our cave. Um, I guess we 
I'll try andesite as a ceiling, but I don't have enough of it yet. Breed some chickens on our way down. Okay. Actually, we're probably going to need a couple more picks, stone picks. Your kitchen is full of dry food. It's a dollar bag for beans or rice or pasta. If you spend three dollars twice a month, month you'd end up with a ton of food. Yeah, I mean, I do a lot of um, a lot of frozen food, which lasts a long time. Oh, see what I do for meat. If I'm ever really stuck for meat, um, Costco has these. Um, like pork tenderloins that are like, I'm trying to like get my hands. They're like probably like this long. So like one to two feet, like probably like one and a half to two feet long uh, that you can get for like 20 bucks. But you can cut those into like anywhere. I usually get anywhere from 20 to 25 pork chops with uh, the butt ends for a roast. So that lasts like at least a month or two. So yeah, I do manage, I do maintain my Costco membership. I actually have to renew it probably next month, but, um, so that's not super, like the membership itself isn't super cheap, but it's worth it for the, um, the savings and everything. Like I save, um... Probably almost as much on my Costco membership as I pay for litter in a year. Like, if I were to get my litter at another store, I would probably pay about 50 to 100 Like, the amount that I would save on just buying my litter... No, come back, chickens! Here, chicken. Chicken! Chicken! Let's go. Okay. There. See, the problem with that record, I don't know. I'm not entirely in agreement with outdoor cats unless you're rescuing, like, unless you're caring for cats that are strays and they sometimes come in. Uh, just because, like, the vet bill is almost going to, it, like, if you want to properly take care of them and get them all of the required, like, shots and treatments and stuff so that you don't have to worry about, like, um, illnesses and parasites and all of that kind of stuff, not including like any accidents or injuries they might sustain by being outside. Um, it's more expensive than just buying the cat litter. <laughs> There's a lot of deer, deer right here, right at the entrance. That said, there are some cases where having an outdoor cat is better than the cat, like, not having a home at all. But...
apartment residents born and raised are not actually your cats. No, yeah, see, like, that's a different, like, um, Mux has some cats that he takes that are, like, it, either outdoor cats, like, straight up outdoor cats never come inside, or indoor outdoor cats, but they were strays that he ended up taking care of. In my case, my cats are strictly indoor cats. But that also means that I don't need to, like, they don't come in contact with anything. I'm not, I'm in an apartment as well. So not even, they don't even have a chance of coming into, like, we have insect issues, but there's no mice here. So they have no chance of coming into contact of things like fleas, um parasites from eating uh, infected wildlife uh, the various diseases that can be transferred among uh, like between cats and all that kind of stuff that's awesome penguin can you please move did you hear that we're talking about cats? Come here. Come here. Hi. What? What? If you want to come on my table, then you're going to get attention. It's more of just one of those things where, like, if you're going to go out and, like I said, like, in that case, it's different. But, I don't know. I just find that if somebody actually goes out and adopts a cat and then just lets it go outside where it can die or get sick, like, what's the point of even getting an animal? I know that's potentially a controversial subject, but... It is also accurate. We need all of this durite. And then we'll also get the granite too. Because we accidentally made all of our granite into stairs. There used to be a white cat that was most likely a house cat with a shitty owner because he would get aggressive with her alpha. Penguin talks a lot. Penguin talks a lot. Um, Pickles doesn't really talk much. Comment, it'll chatter sometimes. Penguin talks a lot, though. We have, she's what, she's the reason that, uh, like, that's the reason that she is our high emote. Oh, Penguin understands a lot of words. It depends on, like, like obviously she doesn't know everything, but she knows a lot of words. She knows a lot of words. Like, she knows, um, she knows food, water, cheese, prosciutto... A uh, treat. Uh, she knows her name. I'm pretty sure she knows the word litter.
pretty cool though that they're that affectionate. That's kind of like what um, the strays are like when I visit Mux. Penguin likes to be held, but she acts like she doesn't, so she complains when you try to pick her up, but then she starts purring, even though she still sounds like she's complaining. Um, Comet loves attention, but he's not really a lap cat. He likes to be picked up and held like a baby, though. And then Pickles is your full-on stereotypical annoying lap cat as in i'm gonna sit on you and lick your face and you can't do anything about it i'm also bigger than some small dogs so deal with it <laughs> they're all so different iron over here too that we're gonna grab all right back to the Dior <laughs> you don't pick cats up out of respect well, I mean, for stray cats, that's a good idea. But keep in mind, mine are like, mine are strictly indoor cats. They've been pets ever since they were kittens. Comet freaking trained himself. He, um, he was an outdoor stray at Mux, Mux's place, who essentially turned himself into an indoor cat. Comet turned himself into an indoor kitten. And we brought him in pretty much as soon as the the mother stopped like nursing them daily and leaving them on their own. Because he used to follow Mux inside. Even like from the like what was it? Like a couple weeks old? Like from the time his eyes were still blue. So And he, he will literally, he will almost literally jump into your arms. So, he likes being held like a baby. And he actually gets depressed if you don't do it for too long. And if you don't, he'll start sulking. Uh, when I went away for Christmas, it was the first time he'd been left alone for that long. Because usually I take him with me. But I didn't want to take him with me because I was flying. And... We, I actually tweeted a video of it, but we learned that I could talk to them through my Google Home. And whenever we would call them, they'd come running and they'd sit on the tape, like he and Pickles would sit on the table and like look for me. Um, but when I got back finally, he like came to make sure that I was actually back. And then he refused to let me touch him for like until the middle of the night when he started sleeping like up on my pillows again. Which is what he does a lot. I was also worried he would wander off and never be seen again, so you had to be careful. Well, yeah, because he was he was actually like undernourished and stuff. We think he was a runt. He was kind of undernourished when we when we first brought him in. Like he was scary skinny. But he took to being an inside cat within, like, 48 hours. It was insane. Like, definitely not typical. <laughs> huh. 
how's my inventory space looking? I should probably go take lunch. Actually. Okay, well, let's call that that for now. We'll go back. We know that there's more there that we can get, both granite and diorite. Please tell me it's daytime. Yes, it is. But it's either sun is rising or it's about to be. I think the sun's rising. Okay. Kind of don't want to stop, but I need to go get some lunch and try to exercise a little bit. can't go outside, so I gotta do something. Okay. Let's not screw this up this time. So we are gonna make... Okay. Polished diorite. And then we're gonna make polished granite. Not stone. Stairs. There we go. All right. All right, guys. I am going to take a break for lunch. Uh, we will be back probably uh, roughly around 1 o'clock. We're going to be doing some Phasmophobia with Mux and Terry. And I think Terry said he should have a... Um, Terry said he should have a fourth. Um... And then I'm thinking we might do some more Minecraft tomorrow morning. We'll do some more Minecraft tomorrow morning. I want to at least finish our main room before we start up with Origins. And then again, like I said, we'll probably do some Minecraft probably at least once or twice a week for a half day. But for now, guys, I'm going to take a break. Uh, I got to go get some lunch. I got to try and work out a little bit. Um, I don't think anybody's streaming right now. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. Hopefully we'll see you guys in about an hour when we start up with Phasmophobia. Uh, I get scared very easily. So if you like to see somebody shit themselves... Until then, we'll see you guys soon. Bye.